Well, let's get started on Steam, shall we? First off, you'll need to go and do... where is it? sudo dnf install, and we're going to put in Steam. That's it. Enter password, and install. It's 495 megabytes, because it, it comes with a lot of cool stuff uh, that really help you get an overall stable experience. Stable, is that a word? Stable experience. My bad. System, libs, tons of crap that I don't feel like explaining, because if I did... The video would take up to 20 to 30 minutes long, and that's boring. So, if you liked not doing it in the terminal, well, what else is new? You can go into the software center and do it there as well. I don't recommend the software center. It can cause a couple of problems. One, you're going to be installing it through the FlatHub. The main problem with the whole FlatHub release is uh, things are a bit changed, I guess but it does allow you to add some cool stuff, like a Vulcan overlay to see your FPS, whatever you want. Now that we have it installed properly, what we're going to do is we're going to grab a custom Proton release, okay? So it's GE Proton. Why do I grab a custom Proton release? For one main huge reason. Games are just overall more stable with GE's Proton. So you click here to download and we need to run Steam first to be able to use it. So we're going to go to Steam. It's going to open. All right. It's going to do the old Zenity thing. And it basically pins potential edit software and updates it anyway. Cool little thing that it does. It helps you keep on track, I guess. And this depends on your download speed, as we all know from Windows. Pretty much exactly the same. So you're able to run Windows games using Proton through the native Steam client which is cool. And another thing is, if there's a native Linux version of that game, you're able to play that over the Windows Proton version. And that's kind of cool, you know, because most native Steam games run great. And you know what to do here, so I'm going to log in, and then we'll get back to the video. Well, we got access. Click this button to open this up. And it hasn't extracted. It's, it's extracting itself. Give it a second. Uh, when this finishes, you know it's done. Scroll down, and you're going to see some pretty wicked commands here, okay? So I'm going to teach you something pretty cool to do into Terminal, and that's create a folder, because that could be pretty important. So do make, so mk, dir stands for directory, and paste that in using control shift v Once you do that, you get no error message. That means what we have is, what we need is made. So you hit copy. You go into home folder, all right, go into steam folder, go to the root folder, and you'll see one com called compatibilitytools.d. You're going to paste this in, and once it's done, you're good to go, and you're going to exit out of steam real quick. Don't forget to add it to your favorites on your dock or your dash to panel. So just hit quit real quick, open it back up. We should be greeted with a message such as normal, enter your pin. I swear to God, you better have a pen. You better be keeping your account safe, because if you don't, you're definitely screwed. Who's this? Uh, confirm. Don't know who this is, but I'll confirm it. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to get yelled at for that tomorrow. Go into settings and go into Steam Play. So as you saw, I went to Steam, settings, Steam Play, and enable for all Steam titles, and restart Steam, and that's it. You're finished. Now you can run Steam games using Proton. And as I said, this version of Proton is more advanced and has a lot more fixes. So games like Grand Theft Auto will work perfectly fine. Games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Rise of the Tomb Raider have native Linux ports. But games like this, uh, on the other hand, don't. And I'd rather not install it right now because if I do, uh, it's just going to bog down my system. So instead... We're going to go with everybody's favorite title that never dies, sadly, called Skyrim. I agree. And it's installing the Windows version of it, of course, because there's no Linux version. This is your Steamworks common redistributables. You're going to need that as well. And once that's finished, it's going to download your pre, uh, your shader pre-caching content, which makes the game smooth as butter. All right, it's not that big either. For an open world game, it pretty much repeats almost every texture and every asset as far as the eye can see it basically it's a mind game 
It's hilarious. And that should be done now. And it's going to grab the game. Hopefully it won't be that long. 10 megabytes, really? What does this look like? America? Here's the thing. If your internet speed is slower than normal, okay, I'm going to exit out of this again because it's spam. You'll go into settings. You'll go to downloads and you'll change to your nearest place. The fastest place that I have near me is actually New York. All right, Montreal has horrible internet. So we're going to restart Steam again on my own accord so you guys don't get bored to death. And there you have it. My internet's going up much faster. So I'll be back once this game is done and should only take a couple minutes. And then we'll get started by hitting play button and see how it runs. All right, well, it seems to be downloading a lot faster at 86.4 megabytes a second. And we should be done here very soon. Yay. I know you totally didn't need another update, but I like my internet speed. So do you. It should be a lot faster than this, but Skyrim's got a lot of small files. All right, so let's jump in game. As you can see, you're going to get this annoying little pop-up, which says this game will launch with Steam Play using a compatibility tool. It allows you to have facts if you need to, whatever, do what you need to do. After that's done, it's going to start the install process for everything the game needs, such as VC redistributable packages, and it will probably install stuff for audio as well, and it needs a lot for audio. I believe XAT is needed, so that audio even works in-game. You will be able to use a controller, of course, if you want, or your mouse and keyboard. It doesn't really matter. Compatibility is, in fact, quite high. And it's going to take just a couple more minutes for this to work because this stuff's always slow. Okay, so now it's going to process the Vulcan shaders, which could take a lot of CPU. I don't know. Let's take a look. Um, right now, the system load is normal, so I guess they reduced the amount of load. You can also skip and build your own shaders if you want, but I recommend you go through this. That way it gets done ahead of time, but it will take a lot of RAM. So this is going to build up quickly, and so is this. Hopefully you have a good amount of RAM. I also have swap, about 4.2 gigs, and I have a lot of RAM as well, 16.8 gigs. As you can see, we're at 69%. Huh? So yeah, it really does go up over time. Mm, see that system loads now going up pretty high let's just do that yeah let's get into game so you're going to want to minimize this window to reduce risk of uh windows overlapping and as you can see i believe it set everything to ultra so let's check yep everything is maxed out at ultra including 64-bit render targets and we're going to hit ok and hit play now, hopefully it doesn't end up on my other monitor and just use this one, which it does. Thank you. And Bethesda Game Studios, the studio that keeps giving us the same game over and over and over and over again. Gotta love those guys, huh? As you can see, we don't have our overlay enabled, but I'm going to hit enter anyway and get into whatever this is. Because I don't know if this is a game or not uh, that I want to really take a look at. Yeah, great. I have to get my controller. Give me just You're not one sec. Supposed to be here. Crap. Last warning. Leave. Now. He's angry. Birds, trespasser. Smear you won't be here alive. Okay. Wait, am I being attacked still? Get out of here. Okay, so that should be it. Nobody else should be in this house. And we're golden. And because I did all that work, I'm taking their sweet roll and all of their mead. Yeah. What the fly in hell? What the hell happened in that bed? Alright. If you don't know the story about this place... Um, she's their fake wife, those two love each other, and they sleep with each other, and, yeah, I'm gonna get the hell out of here, this is weird. Not weird in the sense, it's just that they have to have a fake wife not to be murdered, so. Oh. 
how do I put my weapon away? Okay, there we go. So as you can see, Skyrim runs Sorry. perfectly. Looks perfect. Sounds perfect. And there's absolutely no issues. And I look like an average Nord douchebag. So what really more is there to say? I showed you how to get Steam up and running. I showed you how to get games installed. I showed you how to be very patient and not impatient like me because I like my download speed as fast as possible. Uh, tell me your experiences in the comment below. Let's have a chat. If you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe button if you like the content. You know what to do. Hit the bell to be notified of future content, and I will murder a guard later. No, I'll see you guys later. Stay safe, okay? Bye-bye.